What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of The Dig, a series dedicated to helping you improve profitability on your farm. On today's episode, we're gonna be changing things up a little bit. So Colin and I are really busy right now. We're trying to wrap up planting. We've got some applications going on right now, some side dress, trying to spray post, just a lot going on. We're busy, just like I know you guys are busy right now, trying to wrap things up. So what we're gonna do is actually rewind it a little bit and play an episode from last year that still has some really relevant information. And then as we go along, we're gonna include some new data and just some other pointers that we might have along the way. So with that, I think we should dig, it's still digging in, right? I think so, yeah. yeah. Digging in, right? Yeah. We're still digging in. Okay, so I'm Aaron. This is Colin. Let's, Let's dig, dig in. in. Again. Again. Let's talk about maximizing fungicide applications. The first place to start, is a fungicide pass even worth it? You tell me. All PFR signs point to yes. I know you guys have heard us talk about fungicide before, right? But we can't do an in-season management episode and not talk about that fungicide application. We just have to. Now we are gonna go into a lot of detail and dive really deep into this, but we're gonna give you some good pointers to hopefully really maximize that fungicide pass when you're doing that this growing season. So when is the optimal time to spray? Later fungicide applications in corn can help control diseases that tend to move in after pollination. Diseases like tar spot, gray leaf spot, northern corn leaf blight, and southern rust, all of which have become significant foliar diseases of corn in our area that can lead to significant economic losses and harvest issues. PFR data has consistently shown that the most profitable fungicide application timing for corn to combat these diseases that Colin is talking about is that VT to R1 growth stage. Depending on infection timing, disease pressure, and the diseases presented, a delayed application after brown silk when kernels are between blister, which is that R2, and dough, which is on the R4 stage, may provide maximum fungicide performance. When it comes to soybeans, foliar applications can help control disease that tend to affect the crop early in the season. Diseases like septoria brown spot, which can infect soybeans early, especially after periods of prolonged wetness, and frog eye leaf spot can lead to economic losses and harvest issues. PFR proven data has consistently shown that the most profitable fungicide application timing to help combat those diseases is at the R3 growth stage. R3 is when there's a 3 16th inch pod at one of the top four nodes. Now we know when to spray, but what time do we spray? When it comes to fungicides, the early bird gets the worm. Our data indicates that fungicide applications are most effective when applied in the morning, as dew can help spread the fungicide over the leaf's surface. Three-year multi-location data shows a little over $10 an acre ROI advantage in corn and a little over $5 an acre ROI advantage in soybeans for applications made at 8 a.m. versus 3 p.m. So spraying in the morning versus the afternoon. We talk all the time at PFR about how early planting pays, but even when planting late and potential yields are suppressed, the decision isn't what your overall yield is, it's whether or not adding fungicide will increase your profitability. And our data shows, I guess it does. Like my compadre just told us, we all know that early planting pays, but sometimes mother nature has other plans for us. Later planting dates always bring challenges, but that doesn't mean that we should just give up on investing in our crop. We have conducted multiple studies around planting date, including planting date fungicide response studies, and they all prove the same thing. It still pays to invest in that crop regardless of planting date or final stand. There's a lot of pressure from diseases like tar spot and southern rust, and fungicides really are crucial to managing these aggressive diseases that we're seeing now. But our three-year multi-location data of fungicide response ROI by planting date is very clear. Even though you're dealing with late planted crop or reduced stand, don't walk away from it. Because as you can see here, the later planted crop has a better response to fungicide. By the way, this is PFR proven now. That's right, Colin. Now, some of our viewers are probably wondering why do we see that good response to fungicide in that late planted crop? I can see that. Well, I've got a pretty nifty little chart we can look at here that will explain everything. You notice here we have three different planting dates on the screen, April 20th, May 10th, and May 31st. The green bar is gonna be the amount of time that we spent in those vegetative growth stages. 
and the yellow bar is gonna be the amount of time spent in the reproductive growth stages. The purple bar that you see coming down around that August 15th timeframe is gonna be a hypothetical disease onset. So if you look at that late planted crop, it spends a lot of its reproductive growth stages battling off the effects of that disease that came in, whereas that April 20th planted corn only has to spend about half of its reproductive growth stages battling that disease onset. So that's why we see the response that we do to a later planted crop getting that fungicide application. Aaron, what about soybeans? Well, you know, similar to corn, when faced with late planted soybeans, our data proves it also pays to apply fungicides. Our 2022 multi-location data shows a $21 ROI for fungicide applications on a June planted crop. This is also PFR proven now. Late planted soybeans often face abiotic stress during pod fill. The fungicide applications can help alleviate their impact. So just because you planted late doesn't mean you walk away from that fungicide application. Be willing to invest in that late planted soybean crop. So there is one downside though to late season applications of fungicide. It can make the plants stay greener a little bit longer, which ultimately can delay harvest a little bit. The decision that you'll need to make is if a delayed harvest is worth a three and a half bushel to the acre yield increase for your operation. I think I would probably lean towards taking that three and a half bushel yield increase. I would too, I would 100% agree. I'll push back harvest a couple weeks. Your personal decision could be contingent on the number of acres you have to harvest, how much help you have, or how many combines are in your operation. But from a yield perspective, it's a management consideration you still need to think about. If you want to see some more content about in-season decision making, we also made a video last year uh, as be episode eight of The Dig. Go check that out. Aaron, with all that information, I am ready to get out there and go spray my way to profitability. Hey, I hope you do, and I hope our viewers do too. Don't forget to also like and subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you get notifications for future videos when they come out. And we will see you all again on another episode of The Dig. Now get out there and spray your way to profitability. I don't think you need to be that aggressive with them. I mean, I agree, but you don't have to I'm yell just at so them. passionate about it. Three, two, one. Let's <laughs> dig. <laughs> you count it off. Okay. And remember it all. This is also PFR proven. Hold your hands. This is also. Very well, could be a third PFR proven product out of this study for next year. Fourth. Sorry. Okay. <laughs>